Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm gonna to show you how to put two toruses in Blender, or two rings, loops, whatever. Put a little cloth simulation in between them and kind of make it stretch and pull it around. It's not a loopable animation, but it's pretty fun to do. I would say this is more of a basic intermediate level tutorial. If you're really, really new to Blender, you might not be able to follow along very well, but even if you are, give it a shot, see how it goes. Um, I will be making my um, project file available to my Patreons. And you can see over here, here is one of the final renders that I did with my original project. Now I will be going for over everything, including the lighting and the animation. So I will take you guys from the beginning all the way to a finished render today. And um, yeah, I hope you guys like it. If you haven't done so, subscribe, check me out on Patreon. All that stuff's in the link below. Um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so when you scene open up in Blender, go ahead and delete everything in your default scene. Then go Shift A, go to your mesh options, add in a torus. With this torus selected, go R, X, 9, 0, and hit enter. So that's going to rotate our torus 90 degrees on the X axis. Go to your modifiers, add in a subdivision service modifier, and then go ahead and apply it. Go to your object and then enable the shades move. Now what we're going to do is grab this guy here, go Shift D, and then Z and move this guy down to over here, just so it's lower. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode and full of these vertices selected, we're gonna go Alt S. And if we drag this in, we can shrink it. So we're gonna make a ring with a smaller diameter than this big torus up here. Okay, so that's good. Now we're gonna add in the thing that's gonna be our cloth simulation. Let's go Shift A, we're gonna add in a box. Then we're gonna go G, Z, bring this box down. So it's roughly in the middle of these two objects here. And then what we're gonna do is tab into edit mode and we're gonna go S, X and scale this geometry like this and then S, Z and scale it up on the Z a little bit. Just like that, go to your right orthographic view, go S, Y and just scale it in like so. Then what we're gonna do is go into your solid view and over here you're gonna go Control R hovering over here and we're gonna add in some loops. So you're gonna roll the middle mouse wheel once you've got control R and then double click, that's gonna add in some loop cuts. And then what you're gonna do is come over here, click on this um, face over here, holding and shift and control, click on this bottom face. That's gonna select all of these faces and then go X and delete faces. And then select uh, this one over here, holding and shift and control, select this bottom face, go X and delete all of these faces. Then come over here, go control R to add in a loop and then roll your middle mouse wheel to add in some cuts. Come down here, control R, roll your middle mouse wheel and add in some geometry. Then come to your front over here, hovering over here, go control R, add in a loop and then roll your middle mouse wheel to add in geometry. So I just want this to be nice and subdivided like this. Then we're gonna select this edge loop here, go to the right orthographic view, and then go G and just move it in like this. Select this loop over here, in your right view, go G, bring it in like this, and then the same with the two at the bottom here. Just to round it out a little bit, so it's not as sharp. So now we have this band around here like this. That's gonna be our cloth sim, and we can go to our object and enable shade smooth on this as well. Now let's add in our backdrop, so we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our mesh options, add in a plane, RX90, hit enter, and then S to scale this guy up quite big, like this. G, Y, and just move it into our back of our scene, like this. And then what we're gonna do is go to our front view. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a camera. Go hit zero to go into your camera view, and then G, press your middle mouse button and just zoom back, like this. Go to your camera settings, and we're gonna make the focal length 85, hit enter. Then what you're gonna do is go to your output settings and make the Y value on the resolution 1920 and hit enter. And now what we can do is go G, Z with our camera selected and bring it down to here. And if you hit G in your middle mouse wheel, you can kind of zoom back like this. So we're just gonna get a view like this. Also grab this backdrop, scale it up a bit more if you have to and go G, Z and just bring it down. So just so it's filling up the back of our scene here. Tab into edit mode if this guy selected and then go Control R and then roll your middle mouse wheel to something like this, double click. And we're in our edge select here. And then if these edges selected, we're gonna go Control B and we're gonna drag our mouse and move it till we get um, a cut like this. And if you roll your middle mouse wheel, you can add in some more geometry. So we're gonna roll it once to add in an extra loop, double click. 
And then what we're gonna do is go control minus to shrink that selection. Then we're gonna go G, Y, and just move that guy back like that. Then we're gonna hit A to select all of this geometry. And then we're gonna go control B and just create a bevel on all of these and add in one cut. Double click, tab out of edit mode. And now we have this backdrop here. Then go to object and enable shade smooth. So that guy has smooth shading. So here we have a scene. So let's do some really basic cloth simulation. So we're gonna, um, first of all, select this big torus up here. Go to our um, physics settings over here. We're gonna make this a collision. Come down here to the thickness outer, and we're gonna make it 0 0.01. And then we're gonna come to this thickness inner, and we're gonna make it 0 0.01 as well. And this collision thickness here is gonna determine what the spacing is between um, this mesh here and our cloth simulation. And if there's too much of a gap in between here when we run a cloth simulation, you can decrease that number. Now keep in mind the scale of your scene is also going to determine what these um, settings are here. But for now we'll leave it at this. Select this ring in the bottom and give this a collision as well and do the same thing 0 0.01 and in the inner you're going to make it 0 0.01 and hit enter. Then we're going to grab this cloth over here. I think this is going to be our cloth simulation. We're going to give it a cloth um, in the physics and we're going to make the quality steps here 12 and hit enter. Then we're going to go down to our collisions and under the quality here we're going to make it 12 as well and we're going to come enable self collision and I think that should be okay for now so let's just quickly hit the space bar to play our animation and we're going to see we have a nice cloth simulation here and what we can do as well is animate um, these guys now so let's go back to frame one so just go um, shift and left arrow button that's going to take you back to frame one and we're going to do some animation now with this guy here so go into your camera view and what we're going to do is we're going to come here to frame 20 and in frame 20 we're going to go i we're going to insert a location and a rotation key so lock right right over here and then what we're going to do is come over to frame 40 and in frame 40 we're going to go r Z and we're going to rotate this guy like this and we're also going to pull it down and we're going to go G, Z and pull it down a little bit and we're going to go I and we're going to insert a location and a rotation key and then we're going to come to frame 60 and on frame 60 we're going to go G and we're going to move this guy over to the side and we're also going to go R and rotate it a little bit more and we're going to go I, location, rotation now you guys can be as creative as you want with this. And then I'm gonna to go to frame 80. And in frame 80, I'm gonna go G, Z, I'm gonna move this guy up to here. And then G and just move it over here. And then I'm gonna double tap R and just rotate it like this. Then I'm gonna go I and I'm gonna go location and rotation. And then I'm gonna come here to my end frames and I'm gonna make it 120 and I'm gonna hit enter. Now you guys can animate this as much as you want, but I'm just gonna go with this. And then I'm gonna to go to frame 100 frame 100 I'm gonna bring it um, I'm gonna leave this guy where it is but I'm gonna grab this big donut and I'm gonna go I and insert a location and rotation then I'm gonna to come to frame 120 and frame 120 I'm gonna bring this guy down to over here and I'm gonna go I location and rotation so let's go to frame 1 and now if we hit our space bar this animation is gonna play out it's gonna be a little bit slow but we will bake it in later and that'll make things faster so let's have a look at the animation here. And depending on how powerful your computer is, this might be a longer or slower process for you. So yeah, you can see here what's happening. It's a little bit slow, but like I said, once it's done caching this in, it should be a lot faster. Okay, so here is the animation. And if you're happy with it, you can leave it as it is and go ahead and move on to the next step. If you're not, you can come over here to your cloth. Uh, if you select a cloth and you can come here to your cloth settings and you can increase these quality steps if you're not happy with anything here. But I'm happy with this. I'm gonna leave it as it is. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna save a file. So I'm gonna go file, save as. This is very important, especially when you're gonna cache. I'm just gonna call it cloth, call it whatever you want. So I'm saving that file. And then what I'm gonna do is go to my cloth settings. And if we go down here, we can go to the cache 
And we're going to set the end frames here to 120 because that's how many frames we have in our scene. And that's how long we want the, um, the simulation to be cached. Now we're going to come over here and hit bake. And now what it's going to do is it's going to actually bake this um, animation or this cloth simulation into our scene. And that's going to help it help us so we don't, it doesn't slow down every time. But once you do this, any changes you make with the animation um, won't affect this cloth simulation. So you'll have to come in here and delete the bake and then rebake it if you've made any alterations to the animation. So like this animation I just did isn't exactly the same as my original. I'm just kind of showing you guys the, the concept behind it, like how to do this kind of cloth simulation where it's stretching between two donuts or two rings. So this is the, the cached animation now. And the thing that's really cool, if we select this cloth, we can come over here to our modifiers and we can add modifiers on top of this cloth simulation and it won't slow anything down necessarily. So obviously you don't want to go too crazy with subdivisions, but we're going to come over here and add in a solidify modifier. So just quickly pause here. What that's going to do is if we come here to this thickness amount and we increase it, well, I'm going to take mine into the negatives here, but if you go into the positive, it goes the other way. If you go into the negatives, it goes this way. All depends on the direction of your UVs. But anyway, I'm going to go with something like point, um, negative 0 0.05. And then on top of that, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier like that. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So let's quickly have a look and see what that looks like. So here it is. That's looking, um, it looks a bit more realistic now because it has some thickness to it and it's nice and smooth. And like I said, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. So what we're going to do now next is the lighting and the materials here for our scene. And I'll show you guys how to render out this animation. Okay, so we're going to start by coming to our render settings here. We're going to make the render engine EV. So make sure it's set to EV. Then we're going to come down to ambient inclusion, enable ambient inclusion, and go down to your screen space reflections and also enable screen space reflections. Then we're going to go shift A, we're going to go to our lights. We're going to add in an area light. Then we're going to go G, Z, moves this light up to here. And if you come to your light settings, you can increase the size. So we're going to increase the size to something like 10 meters. And then we're going to come to the power and make it 1200. So type in 1200. And then if you go to your right orthographic view, we can rotate this guy like this. And we're going to go shift D, bring one of them down and just rotate it up. So now let's go into our cameras and let's go to rendered view. And this is what we're going to have. But what we can do to make this look even cooler is we go to our world settings and you don't have to do this. Um, but go to get a HDRI on the internet. There's a lot of sites that um, offer free HDRIs like HDRI Haven. Download one and then come here to your world settings. Click on this little tab here. Then go to environment texture. And then just go get whichever one you have on your computer. So I have a few here of my own that I'm going to use. Um, so, uh, um, so let's have a look. Just get something like this. I'm going to open it. And then you can mess around with the strength. I'll probably make it something like 0.8 for now. So it's looking a lot more realistic now because it's um, in um, HDRI lighting. And then we can add some basic materials. So I'm going to go with a yellow theme, but I'm going to select this torus here first, go to my shading, go into camera view here into rendered view. I'm going to go new. And this guy, I'm going to give like a yellow like this. And I'm going to bring the roughness down a little bit. Then I'm going to select this um, cloth here, go new. And give this guy a yellow as well. Maybe a little bit of a lighter or a bit more orangey yellow. Then I'm going to grab this guy down here. I'm going to go new and give this guy a yellow as well. Maybe make it a little bit more reflective. And then I'm going to grab this plane at the back. I'm going to go new. I'm going to give this guy a yellow material as well, like this. And I'm going to increase the roughness to make it look a little bit less reflective. If you want it to be more reflective, you can bring this value down. But up to you. So I'm just going to make this a little bit less reflective. And here is the scene. So it's just a yellow composition. And you guys can work on this as much as you want. Add some different color themes, but I just really like this kind of yellows over here. So I'm going to go with that. You can also select your camera and bring it in a little bit closer if you want. Totally up to you. But this is pretty much how I made my um, original one. This kind of, I took this kind of approach. And if you wanted to render this animation out, by the way, it's not a loopable animation, but if you wanted to render it out, all you'd have to do is come over here to your output settings, go down to your output, click on this folder, choose somewhere in the computer. I'm going to choose my desktop and then come over here to the file format, make it an FFmpeg, go to the encoding, make the container an MP4peg over here. 
And now if you go render and you go render animation, it's gonna render it out to wherever you selected this folder. And you'll have a final animation of a cloth simulation like this that you can show off on Instagram or give to your friends or whatever. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, I know it was a little bit fast, a little bit advanced maybe for some people. If you didn't understand anything, I do apologize. But it's more of a bit of an intermediate kind of tutorial, but I hope you guys did enjoy it. So I'll see you guys later for another tutorial.